Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Can You 100% The Game? Episode number five, the long-awaited return of this series. I tried to focus on the Ruby reviews for a little bit and realized that this playlist was falling behind. So, without further ado, we are going to be tackling Zelda, the Skyward Sword HD on Switch. Um, so, this game is the second official Zelda game that I've played. Um, up until Breath of the Wild came out, I hadn't played any of the Zelda games, and I was tired of getting my nerd card revoked places that I went because I had not played any of the Zelda games. So I started with Breath of the Wild, and that totally sucked me into the series. It was incredible. So when this came out, I was like, I'm gonna get ahead of the curve and get this game, and tried to get all the accessories that came with it because it seems with the Zelda franchise that just everybody and their mother wants the collector's editions and all the jazz that goes with those. So I managed to get a, the European pre-order bonuses for this game. And so in this video, we're gonna dive into uh, some of the sites I used in case anybody else is looking for uh, stuff like this in the future, some stuff I'll recommend. Current price stuff, uh, flipping, and also just a cool little abridged like completionist guide if you are looking to quote unquote 100% this game. This will be the first Switch game in this series, so I am tackling uh, a bunch of a variety of different games. I have uh, a Nintendo Switch OLED and a PS5 uh, that I'm just constantly swapping games with, trying to figure out what I'm gonna play next. Uh, and usually I'm playing one to two games on each, so this playlist will be stacked by the time uh, I'm done with it. So, let's jump into this. And starting off from left to right, featuring my lovely shadow, um, we have the game case and the pre-order steelbook that came with this edition. Uh, it also came with a really cool Zelda-themed keychain and a pouch for said keychain. And along with that, it also came with this really nice poster. Um, all of this stuff was UK slash Europe exclusive. Um, and I managed to find it on a site that I will leave in the comments below in case anybody is interested in looking up uh, some UK pre-orders in the future. They did ship to the US and it was not an arm and a leg to get it to me. So highly recommend that site. I will leave it in the description below. Uh, and just kind of going over some of the other stuff that was like promoted with it. Um, we've got the limited edition Zelda Joy-Cons uh, for the Switch. Uh, these I feel like were not so limited because I have still seen these in Best Buy and Walmart uh, in large quantities, which is great because if you want them, they are still out there. So do not pay scalpers for these. These are still uh, regularly available to find at regular MSRP rates. Um, obviously, when they first came out, they were sky high because supply and demand and also everything that was going on at that time. And last but not least, same thing with this amiibo, the Zelda and Loftwing amiibo and my lovely cup holder right there. Um, this, same, same thing with these, uh, you can still find these at Target in mass quantities. Uh, which is really cool. So if you still want one of these, uh, these Zelda Amiibos seem to be uh, high demand. Uh, so if you do not have one, they are still readily available at Target as well. And here are the inside of both cases. I'll flip both around just so you can see the differences. Uh, obviously, this is the pretty standard cover that you're going to see front and back. And then the steel book has this really cool, um, all the different Zelda symbols and temple logos that are associated with various temples throughout the game. And on the back of the case, you've got Zelda's, uh, the Skyward Sword and the Hyrulean Shield on the back, which is a really nice touch. Uh, something of note, which I found out recently, some of these, depending on the region, can also have different inside art. Um, I found this out because I had two copies of Octopath Traveler and did not realize that both of them had different arts. Uh, not 
every single game is going to do this, but in the case of that, I had a Europe copy uh, that was given to me as a gift, and I ended up managing to get my hands on one of the collector's editions, and inside that edition, it had a U.S. copy of Octopath, and cool fun fact, Octopath has three variations of sleeves on the inside, so it does pay off to do a little bit of research before you buy a copy uh, of any game you are looking for to see if there are different cover arts inside and out to see if there might be a different one that you like. Uh, the Nintendo Switch, as far as I know, is completely region free. Uh, so all of the games that you buy from a different region will work on your copy of the Switch, regardless of where you got it from. So yeah, let's jump into the next part of the video. And now for my favorite part of the video, all of the current pricing and flipping information that I have found while researching for this video. So the regular edition, obviously, if it's just a regular copy of the game, uh, you're looking at as low as $10 and as high as obviously 60 if you go into like a regular store. Um, this was mass produced on a very high level, so it's pretty easy to come by. Um, if you are looking to get a used copy of it, you could probably get it for uh, a relatively decent price right now. It has been out for a while. Um, the Steelbook, uh, which was a UK exclusive, you can get for as low as 17 and it sold for as high as $45. It was a pre-order exclusive, but nine times out of 10, most people don't want the Steelbook. I'm one of those people that I'm like, I'm gonna have multiple cases for this. Probably never use it, but it, they're cool to look at and take out every once in a while. Um, usually when I complete a game, I will put it in the Steelbook to kind of commemorate that I have completed it and now it's in its final resting place. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I found out about those things. Um, and also just as a side note, I did do some digging into the Zelda Loftwing Amiibos and the limited edition Joy-Cons. Those are still going for about MSRP because they are really easy to find currently. Um, you can also get them at stores like Target and Best Buy. Mainly Target for the Loftwing and Zelda Amiibo and also the Joy-Cons uh, are usually at Best Buy and Walmart. I've seen them in large quantities in both of those stores. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've gotten any of these things, if you've played the game or if you're planning on playing the game. Uh, this is a great like tithe over until we get Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, rumor has it right now that it will kind of tie everything together. Again, take it with a grain of salt that it is a rumor, but uh, I'm really interested in seeing how they tie all of this together if it does indeed link all of the stories. So let's jump into the next part of the video, which is what it takes to 100% this game. Okay, and jumping into the completionist abridged guide part of this video. So for me, 100%ing uh, this game involved uh, completing the main storyline, finding all the heart containers, uh, opening all the goddess cubes and all the treasure chests, uh, and at least getting the Hyrulean shield uh, and upgrading the master sword to its final state. Um, I managed to do all of those things and beat the game. Uh, the only thing I did not personally do was complete hero mode. Um, for some reason, this game's uh, button controls, uh, they were really clunky for me. Uh, and I, I really wanted to play the whole game using motion controls, but uh, it was just way more convenient to play the Switch in mobile. Uh, than it was for me to actually use it docked. Uh, I did play some of it docked, not entirely all of it, but I did play some of it docked, uh, and I really enjoyed it. That OLED screen on the new OLED Switch really uh, sells me every time I see it. Even though it is only 720p, it really makes all of the games and the colors just pop very nicely. Um, however, according to the official Zelda fandom wiki, uh, the official 100% checklist, and we'll just run through it really quickly, complete all the side quests, uh, obtain the Hylian shield, uh, collect all the heart pieces, collect all the gratitude crystals, upgrade all items to their highest state, which I think most of them, there's uh, two upgrades after you upgrade the base, so three total. Um, and then you also need to collect all five empty bottles, collect all the treasures and bugs, activate all the goddess cubes and open all the goddess chests, 
obtain all dousing targets and complete hero mode, uh, which essentially hero mode unlocks post game after you've beaten the final boss. No spoilers for this, but essentially hero mode is a harder version of the game. Uh, you do carry over everything from your previous save, if I remember correctly. Um, and depending on uh, how far you have upgraded in certain, certain items, some of that c carries over with you. Um, so that's just kind of the 100% in for that. Um, overall, I really enjoyed this game. The storyline was great. The lore was great. The way that the, the story was all woven together to kind of uh, make the, the Zelda story even bigger than what it already feels like with Breath of the Wild was just really cool. And I know this game came out before that. Um, I would have been really interested to play it on the Wii. I have a Wii U, but no Wii nunchucks. Uh, or Wii modes. That's a whole separate issue for a separate video. But my goal at some point would be to actually try it on the Wii. Uh, and I know it was limited to motion controls, but the button controls on this game definitely helped uh, in terms of playing it on the go. So uh, I definitely highly recommend this game if you haven't played it. Uh, it's great even if you're new to the series. Uh, as someone whose first game was Breath of the Wild, and I've also played Link's Awakening, um, all of these games, the fact that they're coming out with remasters, just introduces the series to a new group of people who may have not gotten to play it previously. Uh, so it's real, and with all these advancements in technology and systems, you know, you actually get to experience it a little bit uh, better with some of the new upgrades that they've done, and the HD textures definitely helped. So it definitely felt like a new game. And jumping into the last part of the video. So cool post game things. The only post game there is, is hero mode. Um, also something I highly recommend is Ruby Farming Early. And there is an amazing website that I will leave in the description below to help you if you have not played the game yet, or if you have put pause on the game, or if you just need more rupees. Um, the website essentially breaks down and calculates all the different things um, it, with the rupee minigame. Essentially, it's like Minesweep, but with rupees. Um, and once you reach the, I think it's the second island, you can start doing this, or the second location that you go to uh, in Skyward Sword. Um, you can start doing this, and I, I had really great luck with this. I was trying to work smarter, not harder. So uh, this will definitely help speed up at the rate at which you can buy stuff uh, and also farm stuff. So highly recommend checking out this website. Uh, overall, it's a great game. All this stuff is really easy to come by, it seems like. Uh, definitely check eBay and Macari for the Steelbook case if that is what you are looking for. Um, and I think that is everything. If I did not cover something in this video that you wanted to know about, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Let me know all your thoughts and opinions on today's video. If you are new to the channel, feel free to subscribe below. I'm tr uh, I've got more videos in the pipeline for this series, and I have a new series that I'm going to start very soon. Uh, I'm very excited about it, and well, we'll see that shortly. But I am your host, a late gamer. That is going to do it for me for this episode. In summary, part two. This game is easily 100 percentable. Uh, definitely don't give up on those bosses and those mini games. Just keep at them. Give yourself time. If you have to take a break, put it on pause, go do something else, and then try it again later. It works wonders for me. It really does. Sometimes you just got to take a break from something, give yourself a mind break, come back to it, and you'll just, you'll, you'll get it at some point. You just got to keep doing it. Uh, but thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.